hello and welcome again to the channel so in today's video i will cover the neural networks and uh, i will not go to into the depth of these and will not discuss the mathematical part of those and i will just discuss the conceptual parts of the major neural networks and i will also cover the terminologies which are used in the neural networks so in this video i will cover those things which are required for our generative ai course in that too i will be majorly covering those things which are helpful to understand the transformer architecture in detail and which is the base for most of the models which are currently famous like the gpt or bard etc so let's first discuss the topics now what i am going to cover in this video so first of all we will see what are the neural networks so we will see different components of that and uh, we will see the motivation from where we took this idea of neural networks and implemented that in our deep learning so we will see the motivation and uh, from where we took this reference so we will see that then after that we will discuss couple of neural networks like first we will discuss the basic thing of artificial neural networks we will see the concept how these uh, how this ann works and we will get the high level understanding and high level working of this so we will understand that and we will see different components of a uh, basic artificial neural network and we will see how they communicate and how that works and we will also here uh, see the terminologies related to the neural networks and after that we will discuss a little bit about convolutional neural network and we will see majorly see the concept and the use cases majorly where this cnn we uh, we can use this convolutional neural network and uh, we will see a little bit about the working of cnn uh, what is the fundamental thing of cnn so we will discuss about that then at last we will discuss this uh, recurrent neural network which is a very important uh, thing so uh, we will spend most of the time over this rnn uh, so here uh, we will see first the high level concept and we will go then uh, a little bit deeper into that we will see different things regarding the rnn and its working then uh, we will also see the use cases where we can use this rnn and where it is currently being used in the industry so we will see that then at last we will briefly discuss about this lstm and gru so let's start our today's discussion without any further delay with this simple understanding of what are neural networks and what is the motivation behind artificial neural network with respect to this deep learning so in the last video i have already explained that the deep learning is subset of machine learning and in machine learning we try to make the machine smarter by some other ways but in deep learning we use the neural networks so we make the machine learn using these neural networks okay so that i have already discussed in the previous video of this uh, generative ai course now from where this idea has been taken in the deep learning most probably you might already already be aware that our human brain works on neural networks concept so uh, there are millions of neurons in our brain and they communicate to each other they transmit the signals and through the, that tra transmission they transmit actually the information and similar concept we have tried to mimic in our deep learning so we are trying to mimic the same concept of neural network which is the base of our human brain working so the same concept we are trying to use in deep learning so that is the motivation or that is the reference for uh, neural networks what we are using in deep learning today then because these neurons which we are using in deep learning that are not natural we are uh, making them so that is why we call them artificial neurons and the network we call that artificial neural network 
okay and one more thing these neurons sometimes we call the nodes in deep learning so that is another thing now let's discuss about how these neural network works in the human brain so let's a let's discuss a little about uh, the human brain then we will come to the deep learning part so in humans like i told there are millions of neurons in our brain and they send signals to each other and they pass these signals using synapses so uh, this is the main word here which you need to consider which you need to remember through synapses uh, these signals are passed from one neuron to another neuron the second important thing is it might be possible uh, let's suppose a neuron is there and it thinks that a particular message or particular signal is not that important and it should not be passed to the another neuron because it is less important so it might be possible that the particular signal or the message will be skipped altogether or it will not be passed at all so it is another uh, important thing which you need to understand so let's see how these concept we are using in terms of the artificial neurons or in the deep learning so let's see how we are using these concepts so this is a simple diagram of a neuron and uh, all the components which are interacting with a neuron so this is our main neuron for which we are talking about and uh, these are other neurons x1 x2 and x3 are the values which are getting passed to this particular neuron which is our main neuron so x1 x2 x3 are the input values we can say for this particular example and these are getting passed to this particular neuron so this is also neuron this is also neuron so all these are neurons and this is another neuron okay we will come to that neuron as well in a while so these are the input values and these are the weights so w1 w2 and w3 these are the weights so like i told previously that it might be possible that some signal uh, is not that important so how we are simulating this thing here using these weights so if that particular input value is not not that important so this weight value will be less or negative so through these weights we are controlling or we are maintaining the importance of a particular input okay so that's how we are using that concept now these values are getting passed to this neuron using these connections and like i told previously the synapses so in real world in the real human brain one neuron passes the signal to the another neuron using the synapses so here also these are called synapses so using these synapses the values are getting passed to this neuron okay and because these are the input values so that's why this particular entire uh, all the nodes or all the neurons which uh, are keeping these input values are called input layer so this layer is called input layer and similarly when a uh, neuron is uh, when neuron gets these inputs along with these weights and it performs its work so we'll come to that in a while what work it do, does it do but consider it has completed its work using these x1 w1 so all the values and the weights after that it calculates some value and it needs to pass on that value to the another node which is this one in our case the another node or another neuron so because this is output the uh, the output is getting passed to this node so this will be called the output layer so there can be multiple uh, neurons as well in the output layer but here in this particular diagram we have only one so this is output layer now whatever layers will be there between this input layer and the output layer these will be the hidden layers so there can be multiple hidden layers and in one hidden layer there can be multiple neurons as well so this is the entire concept about this 
now let's move forward so the output which we have passed to this particular node the output node this can be either a continuous value like price or it can be a binary value let's suppose we have a use case where we are determining whether a particular email is spam or not so there will be two answers only either it will be yes or no so the answer is type of binary so that can be the another type of output which can be passed to the output node okay now the third one is category categorical output so in the categorical output we can have or rather we will have multiple outputs values so this is the example of categorical uh, output where we have multiple output values and like i uh, just told you there can be multiple nodes in the output layer so this is the example of that so multiple nodes are there and this output value like these separate output values are re denoting or representing to a different category so this output value 1 is representing to one category category 1 and this is denoting to category 2 this is how it works okay now one more important thing is these weights so how do we decide the values of weights so when we train our model or when we train our network then in the training stage these weights are getting decided so these weights are decided in the training stage of the model okay so this is important thing to note here so these weights are adjusted during the time of training of the model okay so now let's see what are the activation function and what are the weighted sum so here we will also understand what is the work of this neuron so it is getting these x1 w1 so these input value input values or these weights it is getting these values this particular neuron is getting these values and it is performing some action so let's see what action it perform so first of all each neuron is assigned an activation function and which is i have represented by this function phi okay and the values like the x1 w1 so these values it is getting and it is calculating this summation of wixi which is called the weighted sum so it call it calculates this weighted sum and after calculation of that it passes that value to this function this activation function so it passes that the value like this and whatever value it gets out of that that value is our output so that will be passed to the output node or the output output neuron so this is our output neuron so the output whatever value will be calculated will be given to this output node okay now let's discuss about the convolutional neural network so if i talk about this cnn so traditionally uh, we use cnn for the image analysis tasks so majorly uh, we use this for image analysis task so this is important thing here so before discussing the example uh, let's see the concept of cnn let's see where this cnn is used or in which type of cases we use cnn so it is used where we are looking for some pattern some pattern or for some feature in our data set okay so we are looking for some pattern or for some feature in our data set and we do not know where that might be present in our data set so we have a data set and uh, uh, some pattern is there or some feature is there which we want to extract out out of that data but we do not know and uh, where it might be present so let's see uh, the example and it will be more clear to you so let's say we have this image and in in this image one cat is there which is present in the middle of the image okay 
but it can be present at the left side of the image it can be present at the top right corner it can be could be present uh, at the right bottom so it can be present could be present anywhere so let's suppose we have a use case where we need to find out this cat and we do not know where it might be present it might be present anywhere in the entire image so in those cases cnn will be useful to us so we will give this image to the cnn and cnn will scan the image and find out wherever the cat is present in the image no matter where it is okay so such type of use cases we solve using this cnn so i hope you would have understood the use case where uh, we use cnn uh, that is the same thing which i was telling here so let me revise this so we are looking for some pattern or feature so here our feature was this finding the cat in our data set uh, our data set is the this particular image okay so we are looking for this cat in our image and we do not know where that might be present in our data set so we do not know where the cat might be present in our image so in those cases we use cnn now one more important thing that we can utilize this functionality of cnn for the text data also along with the images generally although we use cnn for the image uh, analysis task but we can use cnn for the text data also let me give one example for that so let's say we have a use case of sentiment analysis okay and for that uh, we have one sentence or one paragraph from which we need to extract out the sentiment whether it was a good senti sentiment happy sentiment or it is a negative sentiment so we want to extract out the sentiment so there also it is the same thing like we have the data set but we do not know where the sentiment deciding word is present like sentiment deciding word means the good is one word the best is one word which is defining the positive sentiment let's suppose there is some negative words like uh, maybe bad or rubbish so these kind of words might be there for the negative sentiment so but we do not know whether they are present at the starting of the paragraph or whether they are present at the end of the sentence we do not know so this is the same case like we have seen previously that we want to extract out some feature but we do not know whether the deciding data or deciding parameter uh, is present in which part of that uh, data set so for this sentiment analysis which is a text data set and here also we can use the cnn okay now let's talk about the rnn which is a recurrent neural network and this is most important so i would suggest you to understand this very carefully okay so first of all we use these rnns for the sequential data and time series data now you will ask what is sequential data and what is time series data so let's discuss that so what is sequential data so when the data points are dependent on other data points in our data set so let's suppose we have a data set and one data point is dependent on some other data point or we can say when the ordering of the data points matters so uh, we have a data set and the positioning of one data set matters and it is important then that is a sequential data set or sequential data so we can say in other words when it matters that at which position a particular data point is present in our data set so that is the sequential data let me give one example and it will make you more clear so let's say one example of text sequence so let's say one sentence a cat sat on the mat this is one sentence the another sentence is a mat sat on the cat so this is another sentence so if you observe here in both of the sentences 
the words which we are using are same like here the set of words are same in both of the sentences what we have done we have just exchanged the position of this cat and mat and because of that only the meaning changes completely okay so here the position of these words are important i hope you are understanding what i am saying so here the positioning is important or because of that this is a sequential data where sequence matters so the same thing i have written here so both have the same words but the sequence of these are not same and that's why the meaning is also changed and hence the ordering matters here so the ordering matters this is the important thing here the ordering of the words is important here let's see some of some other examples so let's suppose we have musical notes so there is a sequence of musical notes so because of the sequence of musical notes the sound of the music or so let me write it down the sound of the music or the structure of the music or the rhythm of the music it will change based on the sequence of these musical notes so that's why the sequence is important here so same is the case with if let's suppose we are making some dish and we have some recipe steps to make that dish so let's say there are 10 steps so we cannot start from the eighth step we will have to go one by one so we will have to perform the first step then the second step then third step we cannot do like uh, the eighth step first then fifth so we cannot do uh, the steps randomly so here also the recipe steps are important we cannot jumble them so this is another example of sequential data now what is time series data okay so it is a subtype of sequential data where the sequence is determined by time so here time is the factor through which we are defining the sequence of our data okay so using the time the sequence is decided so let's see some examples it will become more clear to you so let's say we have stock prices so we have data of stock prices so these prices will be attached with the time stamp so at which time what was the stock price so it it might be at time t0 the price was p1 at time t1 the price was p2 and similarly okay so because this price was at this particular time stamp only so we cannot uh, like change the order of this without changing this time stamp rather this price is based on these time stamps only these time stamps only the deciding factor here to decide the sequence of these prices like this was the first this was the price then this was the price then this was the price how are we deciding this based on these time stamps only because they are in increasing order that's why we are saying these are the prices through which the stock moved so here the deciding factor is these timings okay so same is the case with this website logs so here also logs are attached with the time stamps so at which time this particular log is printed and the another time that particular log is printed so here also the sequence of logs will be decided on the basis of time stamps i hope it is making sense to you the another example can be the weather data like today is this data of the weather and tomorrow is this data of the weather so it is also same now let's discuss about the concept of rnn on which it works so this is the neuron uh, which is a single recurrent neuron okay and uh, similarly what we have seen in the previous networks we have some input we have some output and we have this summation like this particular neuron will do summation uh, on the basis of input values and we have this activation function so this is activation function and all of the things are in placed like we have seen in the previous networks 
there is one little extra thing is there which is this feedback loop now let's understand what is this feedback loop this feedback loop is indicating that we are feeding the output of previous run in the next run along with the new input so what it means so let's suppose we have run this we have got one out input here this summation is applied then this activation function is applied and we have calculated this output so let's suppose i1 was the input this uh, uh, summation of uh, i let's suppose this has done its work and uh, some output is generated let's suppose o1 is generated so o1 will be given here and this o1 will be passed again to the same neuron with the next input which is i2 so i2 plus o1 will be passed again when it will be the next step or the next run so these two inputs will be passed and accordingly the activation function will be applied on this then the o2 will be generated then at the third time the i3 the third input and the o2 will be passed so this is how it will work so that's why it is saying the feedback loop it is called the feedback loop because we are passing the output again to the activation function or to the neuron along with the next input okay so it will be more clear uh, with one more example so one more thing here to note that because of this the past data has also some influence on the current output because we we are passing the older iterations output when we are calculating or we are processing the input to then we are passing the o1 also so because of this the influence of prior output or prior data is also there when we are generating the current output so that is the thing okay so we can see the above diagram in this uh, way also so here so i have represented same neuron three times but they are at different time stamps actually so they are at three different time stamps at t0 t1 t2 okay so let's say here one input i1 is going the summation is applied the activation function is applied and o1 is generated so this output will go here and the same output will come here as well and at time t1 the i2 input will go to the same neuron remember this is the same neuron so the i2 input is going to the same neuron and also the o1 is also going into the neuron when i2 is going so there are two inputs now o1 and i2 and accordingly the o2 will be generated now this o2 will be passed again to the same neuron remember this the time stamp is different but the neuron is same so this time the i3 will be passed here from the third input which is the third input and this is the second output which will be passed and accordingly the output 3 will be generated so like this it will go on okay the same thing i have written here input is coming then activation function will be applied then output will be generated and output is passed to the same neuron this is the main thing at time stamp t1 along with the new input and same thing will be happen for t1 time stamp as well then t2 time stamp like this okay now before moving forward i would like to discuss some important thing here like i want to get some feedback from you guys like how are you finding these videos whether these are helpful or not whether my speed is slow or fast or the content which i am covering in this course or this video where how are you feeling about that whether you are able to learn anything or not so i need some feedback whether you are liking or not if or in case if you are liking the content then do hit the like button also so that i would come to know that you are learning something out of this content okay 
and if you are having any query or any doubt regarding any topic which i have covered or even that is not related to the topic which i have covered then also i would request you to ask that in the comment section so either in that case i will reply in the uh, comment section itself or i will create another video for that so i would request you to give feedback queries and suggestions as much as possible in the comment box itself so that i will get some sense whether you are learning something whether the content is useful or not so it is a genuine request from my side now let's discuss about the use case or the example of rnn so first of all uh, we use rnns where we need contributions of the past data because we have seen that the influence of the previous data is will be there when we are calculating or when we are processing the current uh, input so at that time the influence of past data is there so we need contribution where we need the contribution of past data in the subsequent outputs there we use the rnn okay so let's take one example so let's take example of this weather forecasting so we want to predict whether the uh, if the weather is rainy cloudy or sunny and uh, on the basis of this humidity or temperature values so we need to find out or we need to predict how the weather is so in this particular prediction example or in this use case let's say this is the middle of summer and two consecutive days have strong sunny days okay then it is obvious and it is highly probable that the third day would also be sunny right it is obvious and highly probable so it is a common thing that uh, we might want to use this information of the previous two days uh, when we are determining or when we are forecasting for the third day weather but if we are using the traditional uh, neural networks uh, other than the rnn then it is not possible because in those cases the variables are independent so we give one input we get the output we give another input we get the another output so the two inputs or two consecutive inputs are not related to each other but in rnn they are related somewhat they are somewhat related because we are passing the previous output to the newer input okay so in those cases this rnn useful let's talk about some other important points so the whatever thing we have discussed is called the memory cell this is a word which is important here which we need to remember so this is called the memory cell why it is called a memory cell because it maintains the memory of its previous outputs over the time because there is some influence of the previous data so in one way it is uh, maintaining the memory of the previous data so that's why we call this memory cell and the another property of memory cell will be that more recent outputs or the more recent behaviors will have more influence on the current output compared to the older outputs because over the time the uh, the older outputs uh, will be diluted because it will have the less influence over the time like it is obvious i guess you are getting what i am saying here so the more recent outputs will have more influence okay now for some of the use cases this might even be a problem this might become a problem where we need contribution of the older behaviors in the same proportion okay in the same proportion we need the contribution of the older behavior but uh, through the approach which we have discussed just now so through that the older behavior will be will get diluted at the end so for example let me give one example so let's suppose we have a long sentence or a paragraph and uh, the initial part of that sentence should have equal importance compared to the recently processed part or in some cases the initial part of the sentence will have major importance or the most important when it is deciding when we are deciding what should be the end part of the sentence so there is no less or more importance we can give to a part of the sentence 
so there the approach uh, which we discussed above will not work actually properly so what is the solution for that so for that we have lstm cell so which stands for long short term memory okay so here i am not going into the details and the nitty gritty of this you just need to understand that where we do not want to give preferential treatment to the recent data there we use this lstm cell compared to that straight rnn so i hope this is clear that i gave you the example of the sentence okay so in those cases the lstm cell is used so is it is used where we do not want to give the preferential treatment to the recent data rather it can be given to the older data as well so in those cases we use this lstm cell now there is another thing which is gru which stands for gated recurrent unit and for this also i am not going into the detail and depth of this you can just understand this is an another optimization on top of the lstm cells and if you are genuinely interested to learn this in depth let me know in the comments i will make a separate video uh, with, where i will talk about uh, this gru and uh, lstm cell in detail and depth but for this video i am not going into the detail so that's all for this video i hope the video was useful to you and you would have learned a lot of things from this video and in the next video we will understand the transformer architecture using the concepts which we have learned in this particular video so we will use this video will work as the foundation of that and we will see how the transformer architecture works okay then so do not forget to subscribe and keep learning keep supporting see you in the another video